Peace, family. Thank you for tuning in to another video for Home Studio Hacks. Today, what we're going to talk about is mapping the faders in our cat MPK249 to MPC Beats. Let's get it. It's Uncle Reem, and um, I just wanted to share a little something with you that I stumbled upon while I was making a beat today. If you anything like I am, when you first, you know, try to make the transition to digital controllers, uh, you might have noticed that in and of itself, the digital controller really doesn't do anything. It has to, you have to have a digital audio workstation for the digital controller to work. Um, but if you don't know much about the digital controller, you may find yourself relying more on the mouse and the screen than the digital controller itself. But they, these companies like, you know, such as Akai, Alesis, other companies like, like that, when they made these digital controllers, they made them with everything you need to, um, to control uh, the workflow on a, um, you know, on a digital audio workstation. So the Akai MPK, 249, which is the uh, one I use. I, I also used to use the M MPK Mini before. But these uh, MIDI controllers are equipped to control the full workflow of everything you're doing. Um, but a lot of us don't crack open the, uh, the manuals and so forth. We just want to get right to business. So we learn as we go. And I'm no exception to that. But as I was working, I found something that I really couldn't find any YouTube video to help me learn. And that's how to map the faders uh, on this Akai MPK 249. I still haven't figured out how to map the uh, how to map the pan knobs. If you if you know something about it, uh, you know, shoot, you know, shoot me, you know, leave it in the leave it in the um, comments if you know anything about it. But I still haven't figured out how to map the pan knobs. But I have figured out how to map the failures, and that's what we're going to learn about right now. Uh, turn on your Akai MPK249, and you get the correct preset set. The next step is, in your digital audio workstation, to set it to learn mode. So on this screen... Um, if you go to the bottom of the screen, there's a little smiley face, which means provide feedback. There's a MIDI learn tab. There's an a help info tab. There's a project info tab. There's a project notes tab, an undo history tab, a media browser tab, an expansion browser tab, and a file browser tab, as well as quick help tab. Now, you would click on the MIDI learn tab. After you click on a MIDI Learn tab, you'll notice that a menu comes up. And on that menu, it gives you multiple options. Um, it says global and it also says project. But we want to go to global, to the global mi menu learn. And as you can see on my screen, I have it set to okay, MPK249. If you go to factory settings, they have Ableton for different Ableton controllers, Akai for various Akai controllers. Alesis for various Alesis controllers, Arturia, and so and so on and so forth. But I want to go to we want to go to Akai and, and click on Akai 249, which is what we did, and that's what's set in in mind. So um now to set the faders because there's various different you know settings, all pads, pad banks, etc. To set the faders, you want to go to Q links. Because the Q links are what controls the faders. So to set the faders, we want to go to Q links. And if we look at the Q link settings, we notice that uh, you know we're in channel one, and we see data, and data has a different number. Uh, for the Q link one, the data is three. Q link two, the data is nine. Q link three, the data is fourteen. Q link four, the data is fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and so forth for the different Q links. This information is very important, and 
Uh, it you'll definitely need. We'll definitely get back to this later. But right now, I just wanted to show you the basics of how to initially get started. So, if you notice also in, in this near this menu, you have Learn tab, Enable tab. Uh, first, we're gonna go to the Learn tab. Okay, the Learn tab. Now, yeah, we'll go to the Learn tab. So, the next thing we want to do when we're mapping the faders, we notice there's buttons. There's one that says Preset, one that says Edit, Global, Program Change, and Preview. We're going to go to the one that says Edit. And on our menu, we see we have, uh, my, you know, my wheel, MIDI channel, MIDI CC, and so forth. Uh, what we're going to do is go down to MIDI CC and click that. And if we go to MIDI CC and we, when we get to MIDI CC, if we, we move a fader, we'll notice the fader changes. Like I'm moving the first fader. And it says CC number 18. I move the second fader. It says CC number 21. I move the third fader. It says CC number 22. Fourth fader, 23, etc. Now these, these numbers actually correspond to the numbers on the uh, digital audio workstation. The numbers correspond. You know, when we move the faders, the number corresponds to these numbers on the Q links from the digital audio workstation. Now, the problem is, the problem with the mapping is, this first fader is set to CC number 18, when it should be set to CC number 3. So this is a very simple fix. All I have to do is press the down arrows, it's up and down arrows underneath my push to enter button. I press the down arrows down to where I see, you see when I press it up to comment up the middle CC, I press it down to CC number. And all I need to do is turn this knob to, to three, push that knob. Now this is set to three. If we, this is set to three. Now, on the screen, it actually should respond to that setting. So Q link one, CC three. We'll learn that. Okay. That should be mini CC. Yeah, mini CC. All right now, three. Now, for some reason, it isn't responding. Let's find out why. Let's find out why it isn't responding. Let's see, because the fader here should be responding when I move the fader on my Akai MPK 249, but it isn't happening. So let's see what's happening. Click in here. Okay. Let's find out why it isn't responding. Let's see, because the fader here should be responding when I move the fader on my Akai MPK 249, but it isn't happening. So let's see what's happening. Click in here. Okay. So now it's actually working when I move the fader here, notice that it moves on the screen simultaneously. And if I uh, start the music, hold on, I might need to 
turn my speakers on. <laughs> my speakers aren't on. Okay, so turn that down. All right, now when I start the music. So that particular one is mapped out, uh, you know, fader one. Um, we have eight tracks and we have a fader for each track. So we're going to set up the other faders for the other tracks. And it's as simple as Q-Link 2. The data should be 9. So here we have, once I move Q-Link 2, it says data 21. Real simple fix. Scroll down. Turn the data to 9. Click that. We move that, we notice it reacts on the screen. And next is Q Link 3. The data is 14. Okay. We move Q Link 3. Here it's 22. We scroll that to 14. Click on that. Now, when we move the uh, fader, it reacts on the screen. Next one is 15. That's Q Link 4. It's already set at 23, but we're going to move it to 15. Click on that. Now when we move forward, it reacts. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the other ones. Now we've managed to set all of our uh, faders. We managed to set all of our faders, and we ready. we're pretty much ready to go. We have all of our faders set. So um, we're going to test it out. I'm going to hit play. Right now, since none of the faders are engaged, you don't hear anything. But when I move that first fader, you hear that it engages. See? Next fader. Well, I don't have anything on track two. But I do have something on track three. that so these are the only tracks I really have something on however we see that we successfully engaged the faders so um that's pretty much it that's how to map your faders uh onto Q link or rather, um, how to map your uh, MPK249 faders onto the uh, MPC Beats Digital Audio Workstation. Uh, now, I'm, I know that these pan knobs are also uh, mappable to Q-Links because I've seen other, I've seen it, I've never saw it done, but I've saw someone else use it with those knobs being mapped out. So what I, I know that it is, I just got to figure out uh, you know, which Q-Links these knobs correspond to. And uh, once I can figure that out, then I can map these up out separate from the, um, you know, separate from the slides or the faders. Also, uh, what's, what's, what's helpful with the Akai MPK249 is after you map everything out, you can actually save it and it becomes a preset. And every time you go to that preset, you will have that same mapping. So that's a good thing that Akai does uh, with its products. So uh, that's all for now. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, please leave it in the comments. And if you have anything that you want to learn about that Kai 2 MBK 249 that you don't know, I'm still learning. But if you have something that you want me to look into, then um, just you know give me you know leave a comment. Peace. Thank you for watching.